Get up, superstar. It's time to shine. Here's to the fierce queens, the delusional dreamer, the one who thinks she's all that because she marches to the beat of her own drum. She's not afraid to embrace her flaws, and she finds power in using failure as fuel for evolution. Defying the limits imposed by perfectionism and imposter syndrome, she faces her fears with full confidence in God, because the one who put her here also called her to have dominion here. My name is Barbara Moachi, your online bestie and chair executive officer. Join me and women across the world who refuse to let fear keep them from their wildest dreams. This is Boldly Becoming. Hello, superstar. I hope you're having a fabulous Friday so far. I'm really excited to get into this conversation because I have been in multiple interview situations. I'm talking about job interviews, radio interviews, TV interviews, podcast interviews, any kind of interview, you name it. And I think nothing is more crippling than walking into a room of a panel of very serious people, very seriously dressed people who hold the key to the next door of opportunity of your life and just going blank in the brain because the moment is finally here and you can't seem to bring yourself to make sense. I've definitely had moments like that where I've worked so hard towards something and in the one moment that I had to make it all count, I completely went blank and it's almost as if I stood outside of myself and (laughs) watched myself completely fumble the interview and I know this happens to you as well when you're in an embarrassing situation or an embarrassing moment or something that just didn't go as you planned you try to sleep that night and you literally end up tossing and turning thinking about all the stupid things that you said and all the things that you probably could have left out of that conversation with that person you were trying to impress or on that job interview, how you could have answered the question better and how you could have killed it if you went with a different angle. Like, you know, when you walk into a room and you're giving people all the energy that you have, like, hey, hi, everyone, and you're really friendly with the interviewers and then the interviewers look at you and it's like, grits, grits. I definitely have had my fair share of that. I've been on radio interviews where it's just like, okay, this is awkward. There definitely is no chemistry between myself and this interviewer. And it kind of feels like this person just has me on the show because they need to have a guest on the show. And now they're just fulfilling duty. And I think in the way that I answered and in the way that we had conversation, you could kind of feel that, oh, this is not organic. Like this doesn't work. So I thought that maybe it's a me issue. Like some people just don't receive me well. So basically I convinced myself that with the interviews that went wrong, It was because I couldn't handle not being liked when I walked into those rooms or when I stepped into those studios, whatever the case may be. And what I quickly came to realize after multiple interviews where I was like, okay, regardless of whether they receive me with warmth and a smile or not, I'm going to give them my best energy. What I realized is even in the situations that I am able to regulate my emotions and regulate my response to being received coldly in a room, I still walk away from the interview feeling like this is not an opportunity that is the perfect fit for me. And this is not an environment where I want to work. This past week, I shared my Tax FM interview on TikTok. If you haven't heard, by the way. Also, like, I don't know if I should be announcing this because technically I still have to undergo training before I'm actually going to be allowed on air. And who knows, like... (laughs) (laughs) who knows if by the end of that training they're like "Mm, girl actually we don't want you go back so I don't know if I should be saying this but out of the spirit of growing together and becoming together I think I will share with you the news that I made Tux FM as a I almost said TV presenter that is so crazy maybe I'm maybe I'm manifesting the next season of my life but I made it onto Tux FM as an on-air personality which is really exciting so I'm going to be starting training on Monday but just like every other inter or most interviews that I do, I managed to record my interview and upload it on social media. And my Tax FM interview 
particularly is available to watch on TikTok. And I loved reading the comments because so many people in the comment section were talking about how cool it was that I was speaking to my interviewers as if they were my friends. Like people in the comment section could tell that I was completely confident. I walked into that room. I owned it. And when I left, someone actually said, if they don't take you, it's their loss. And I genuinely felt that way. Like when I left that room that day, not that if Taxi FM doesn't take me, it's their loss, but I genuinely was at peace with how I handled the interview. I was very happy with the conversation that I had with them. And if they didn't take me, it definitely was no hard feelings on my end because I knew that would mean that I'm not the right fit for the organization simply because of how well I think I did in the interview. I was super present. I was very level-headed and every single answer that I gave, I would definitely allow myself to do it again. There is absolutely not a thing that I would change about that interview. And this morning I got an email that said, congratulations, you're going to be a part of the Tax FM family. So that's very exciting. And that kind of prompted me to maybe change the topic that I was going to have this week and rather share with you practical tips on how you can ace your next interview based on my 100 trial and errors. And this will work whether you're on radio interview for your business, whether you are doing a job interview for your first graduate program or the promotion that you're looking for. I think if you're ever in a situation where you need to sell yourself or you need to get some sort of feedback in order for you to get into the next level of success in your career or in whatever it is that you are looking to get into, then this podcast episode will probably help. So the first thing that I've learned from doing a hundred million interviews is that you simply cannot control people's perception of you. You have to let it go. And there's something called preconceived bias where you walk into a room and already people have decided that they don't like you because of how you do your hair or because of how you chose to dress that way or maybe because of the color of your skin. You know, there's so many different things that we can't control that is beyond us. And unfortunately, the world isn't perfect as much as we'd love for the world to be perfect and progressive. There are some people who still don't accept members of different kinds of communities. And you can fill in the blank, whether it's the LGBTQIA plus community, the black community, the Hispanic community. There's so many different communities that we all form a part of. And sometimes we just aren't welcome in certain spaces. And I'm not saying that is okay, but what I'm saying is you cannot fixate on that and try to change someone's perspective of you because that's a preconceived idea that they've already decided they're going to have and hold on to. And you're just going to have to let it go and be yourself. So the best thing that I would do in that situation is focus on what you can control. So things like preparation and presentation, you know, Googling the company that you're going to be interviewing with, if that's the case. Googling the show that you're going to be interviewed on. Get familiar with the interviewer um, and, and find common links between yourself and them. And that's what I found is that the best way for me to curb the lack of synergy between myself and whoever will be interviewing me if it's on radio or television is to look up the presenter and find similarities things that I know I will be able to relate to that person on because the moment I show them that they and I have common ground already that barrier is broken and they immediately feel like they are a part of my community so we form a new community and so if I could give you an example it can be something like, I am a black female, right? And this person might be a white male. Already, we feel like we are in two completely opposite sides. Okay, maybe not already we feel like, but generally the world would put us in two separate communities because there's this whole um, talk on social media, and I'm pretty sure you've heard it if you've, if you've got social media, that white males dominate every industry and black females are at the bottom of every food chain. Whether you believe that to be true or not, it's the general stereotype that is put out there. So immediately we feel like, okay, we don't have common ground. But when I look up this person and I realize, okay, cool. So um, let's take Bobby van Jarsveld, for example, just a random example, because he just popped in my head. Bobby van Jarsveld, he's a singer. I'm not a singer, but I love music. And I think I 
I actually want to learn how to play a musical instrument in, in, in the future. Let me not say the near future because there's a lot I'm trying to do in the near future. But learning a musical instrument is definitely something that I want to do. And I envy people who are great at songwriting because I feel like they're great at taking emotion and translating that into something tangible that will allow me to experience what they experienced without being in their body. I hope that makes sense. And so if I'm sitting in an interview with Bobby van Jarsveld and I bring up the fact that, oh, Bobby, you know, one thing that I really admire about you is the fact that you are able to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I really love this song. It resonated with me because I wanted to make a song like that. I remember when I felt just like that, but because I don't have musical capacity, I just couldn't. And look now, Bobby and I have got common ground. And not only do we have common ground, but there's so much that we can discuss because I've complimented him. I've admired his work and complimented his work. But now I've also created the ground for him to connect with me on something that I genuinely and authentically am interested in. Speaking of compliments, that actually brings me to my second point, which is it's not bad to be compared. It's actually probably a backhanded compliment. Now, I've been in many situations where people compared me to someone. I remember when I started off on social media, the main person that people would compare me to is Bonang Mateba. And I remember initially I was always like, oh no guys, just because I'm a Twana girl and I'm well-spoken doesn't mean I... I'm like Bonang Mateba, like it doesn't mean I, I'm trying to be like her or people say your personality reminds me of her, all these different things. And while Bonang is someone that I definitely look up to, she's not somebody that I'm trying to be a copycat of. Yes, she heavily inspires a lot of things um, in my life because I find so many similarities between the two of us. We were born in the same town. We speak the same language. We have similar um, interests, I guess, being radio, TV, business, and a whole lot of different things like women empowerment. But at the end of the day, I'm my own person. And when I walk into a room looking for opportunities, I'm trying to provide you value based on the common ground that I found between myself and the prospective employer or organization I'm trying to be a part of. And what I came to realize very quickly in my social media career is that people are always going to compare me to someone and it's likely to be Bonang. But if I'm going to constantly shy away from it and, and oh guys, no, I'm not like Bonang, I'm not this, I'm not that, then I miss out on a key opportunity. And so while you're in an interview process and you're being compared to someone else, it can definitely impact your confidence because obviously you were not trying to emulate someone else. Unless you were, then you're fine. You're not impacted in any way because you've hit the nail on the head. But if you felt like you were being yourself and someone invalidates your abilities or invalidates what you've presented as a copycat of someone else, it's definitely something that can take a knock on your confidence. But if you choose to reframe that and use that comparison as a motivator rather than a source of insecurity, I definitely think you'd be able to fast track your progress much quicker. And so for me, what I found is even though I'll give you an example, I'll give you another example. When I was auditioning for Miss South Africa, you know, you're supposed to put that one minute clip on your social media and then link it to your application on the website. I had put my video very bravely on Twitter and there were a couple of negative comments on that tweet, but the negative com comments were not negative comments like, oh, but you're too ugly to be Miss South Africa or your body doesn't look the way that it should, like you're not toned enough. It was nothing like that. People said things like, this girl has mistaken Miss South Africa auditions for Mzanzi Magic auditions. And a lot of them were giving negative comments about how I think this is a TV presenter opportunity when really they're looking for Miss South Africa. Other people said I was too bubbly. I was too loud. And if you're not South African, what what Papa means is basically you exude a level of confidence that is beyond what they believe you should have. <laughs> That's the best way that I could possibly put it. But if you sit down and look at those com comments, what you realize is they're actually compliments. So what you're saying is that I make a great TV presenter. While you are watching my Miss South Africa entry video, all that's rocking in your mind is I should be on TV. I should be channeling my energy towards TV auditions and not Miss South Africa auditions. And so... 
TV being one of the platforms and avenues that I one day look forward to being on, I took that as a compliment because sometimes people just don't know how to frame what they're trying to say nicely. I remember when I was younger, I used to come home and tell my mom how people are making fun of me for this and for that. And they're asking me, oh, page mang and all of these things. And something that she told me that really stuck with me for the rest of my life was that when people ask you, who do you think you are to be doing ABC, like she thinks she's all that, it's not that I think I'm all that and I'm too arrogant for the room. It's that they think I'm all that and their insecurities are forcing them to try and make me a smaller version of myself. So when it comes to being compared to people, I definitely say that is a great thing. That is the best thing that could ever happen to you because no one will compare you to someone who's unsuccessful. They'll always compare you as trying to be a copycat of a very successful person. And I would say, take that successful person, go read up on them, go see if you can find interviews where the successful person sat down and spoke to people. So something I do quite a lot is watch a lot of Bonang Manteba interviews to get an understanding of her mindset, of her regrets, and of the lessons that she learned on her journey so that I can apply it. And usually in interviews with successful people, one of the very last questions interviewers like to ask is, what advice would you give to someone who's aspiring to be like you or have a career like you? And that's where I fit in because then I would be sitting with my notepad and be like, okay, cool. So if you read, um, Bonang was on the cover of the Glamour magazine, I think August edition last year. And one thing that they asked is what piece of advice would you give to someone who is trying to, you know, be on the same career path as you? And the answer that Bonang gave is posted on social media. If you think you're great at it, if you've got a skill, if you've got a talent, post it on social media and the relevant people will find you. And that's exactly what I'm doing, posting my work on social media. And I think more and more every day when I read my emails and I look at the opportunities that have opened up, majority of them come from people discovering me on social media. So don't feel bad when you've been criticized don't feel bad when you've been compared to someone don't look at it as something that you need to now be insecure of and try your best not to be like this person but rather look at it as a way to identify the unique strengths that you have that make people sick because you're about to be a star because of it and last but not least if it doesn't feel right it probably isn't it and I I think I've learned this quite the hard way. I think it's so, so, so important to trust your instincts and intuition during interviews. I've had multiple interviews, like job interviews, where like midway through the interview, I'm listening to the conversation that we're having and I'm kind of looking at it from an outside perspective and then realizing and having this gut feeling that I'm actually not the person who should be getting this job. Like I'm not the guy or girl for this role and that's okay and an example i can give you is the two radio stations that i went and auditioned at and you can kind of see both interviews actually the one was five minutes the other was about eight minutes um you can find one on my tiktok the other one is on youtube under uh, the wisdom tooth removal vlog so i i had a whole week where i was removing my wisdom teeth and i recovered and at the end of my recovery process i went for the interview at the radio station and i left that radio station and you can kind of see my attitude after both interviews you can see how after the interview on youtube was done i quickly the scene moves from me finishing my interview to me then being at home I think I even took my wig off I was just completely over it I was you can tell by my attitude that it probably wasn't the best feeling after walking away from that interview and with the second interview you can see that ooh, I felt good about myself you can see the confidence in how I'm walking in how I convey myself because it didn't switch from interview straight to home it went from interview to outside the interview door because that's how excited I was to say, oh my gosh, I'm done, I've wrapped it up, I'm feeling really good about this. And so while I did get acceptance into both radio stations that I auditioned for, the first radio station had placed me in a different role. So I had auditioned for the role of a presenter 
and they placed me in the station as a content producer. And I decided to roll with it because I was like, well, at least I've got my foot in the door. Because that's what we do. Let's be honest. A lot of the times we're just looking for opportunity. So if someone is willing to give you a foot in the door, you take it and you run with it and hope that one day they'll allow you to completely walk into the room. And I remember I went for, I think, two weeks. The first week was training. And by the second week, I think there were so many different red flags and not red flags to in terms of the station per se but red flags in the sense that the environment and the culture of the station didn't resonate with who I was and I felt I was going to be creating content that didn't speak to who I was at my core I was going to be creating content and speaking in a voice that wasn't my own And by the end of the two weeks, I had decided that I actually will not be going on with the rest of the training process. I'll not be going on with the induction because this is not a good fit. And I was very comfortable with walking away from that opportunity because I understood that the moment something is not a good fit, I'm not going to feel like I'm valued in this place and you are not going to feel like I add value to this place. So instead of wasting your time and resources and my time and resources, it's the adult and mature thing to say, this is not for me. I'm therefore going to walk away. And with the second radio station, I auditioned and I felt really good about it. I loved the way that we interacted with each other. I loved the culture of the environment because I had to come in and sit in the waiting room. And because I was sitting in the waiting room for about 30 minutes, I got to interact with some of the interns. I got to interact with some of the other volunteers, presenters, content producers in the radio station. And I think even just the the way that I was able to engage with people on that campus radio station versus the first was completely different. And it goes beyond job interviews. When you're going on a first date with someone, a lot of the times we try to focus on the first thing that I spoke about, controlling that person's perception of you, impressing your dates, making them like you, right? When really you should be listening to your instinct and listening to the Holy Spirit within or whatever it is that you follow to say, Do I like this person? Do I feel like this will be a mutually beneficial relationship? Because it doesn't matter whether it's a romantic relationship, a business partnership, whatever kind of coming together or team that is being formed needs to have synergy. It needs to be a good fit. There was an episode that I did on becoming the prize where I spoke about walking away from things that don't serve you. And I definitely think if you want a bigger, more expansive conversation on this point, you should go check out that conversation because I spoke about being a square peg trying to fit into a circular hole. You are going to get hurt and the hole is going to have scratches. The square is either going to have rounded corners by the end of that situation because you try to squeeze yourself into a circular hole or the hole is going to have marks that can't be repaired because a square tried to fit in that hole. So instead of ruining your career reputation, instead of wasting your date's time, and and I've done this even with dates where someone asked me to go on three dates and by the first date I really felt like this is not going to go well and I had to let that person know that I'm not going to waste your time I'm not going to waste your resources by having you take me out on three dates I can already tell that this is not a great fit and unfortunately while I love you and I think you're an awesome human being I don't think that you and I have a mutually beneficial skill I don't have something that compliments you as well as I believe you might have something that compliments me and it's best that we just walk away and this is why I say you need to go check out that podcast episode because knowing when to walk away from opportunities that aren't the right fit can be difficult especially when you're desperate for the opportunity and there's no shame in being desperate for the opportunity because we need to make a living they're bills that need to be paid and unfortunately opportunities hold those keys ultimately when it comes to interviews you really want to walk in there with confidence and maybe we should do a podcast episode on confidence let me know on social media but I really think that 
firstly, let's define confidence, okay? <laughs> okay, now it seems like I'm getting into a whole different podcast episode, but I'm quickly going to try and define confidence for you. And I believe that confidence is having a complete trust in yourself to complete a task well or a complete trust in your abilities and who you are and the value that you offer to the next individual. And so when you walk into interview rooms, not knowing the value that you offer to the company, as much as they might be the people with the opportunity, they're not the only people with the opportunity in the world. There's so many different companies that you can go work at. There's so many different people that you could marry, that you could date, that you could build a life with. But at the end of the day, you need to find the person and the company that works best with your skill sets and recognizes the value that you bring to the table equally to the value that they bring to you. So I guess we'll talk about that in one of the future episodes, but I really would love to hear the feedback that you have. Are there any tips that you have for interviews that you found worked? I know that there are a lot of golden key and master's degree holders that listen to this podcast episode because period, people like that are definitely about their goals. They're about their bag. They're about being that girl, like Lassizue said. <laughs> being that girl um so i definitely love to learn from you as well let me know if you're listening on spotify make sure that you use that little feedback button and yeah and if you have any questions feel free to drop them down as well maybe that would inspire the next podcast episode you never know but until next time do remember that nobody lights a candle to put it under the table when there's load shedding no one lights the candles and then covers them with buckets you put them in the highest point in the house okay maybe not the highest point of the house but you definitely put them in a position that will be able to light up the entire room. And I think the skill that you possess, the talent that you have is definitely needed in certain rooms. And once you walk into that room, you find that you were the missing key to that room being lit up. So don't give up, don't lose hope. If you haven't found that opportunity yet, it probably is because the right one is still making its way towards you. But until next time, remember that you've got this because God's got you and I'm rooting for you. Washa.